We're checking in today with Admirals forward Anthony Angelo. I'm play-by-play -play announcer Aaron Sims. Anthony, good to see you. How's your summer been? Good to see you too, Aaron. It's been going really well. Uh, enjoying the sunshine, still working out and skating, and uh, looking forward to next season. With this season, the with this past season, I should say, going into June, what has your off season been like? Has it been much different than the past? Are you on the ice uh, at the same time, or do you give yourself a little bit more time than, say, if your season ended in the middle of May or whatever it may have earlier? Uh, this is the farthest my season has ever gone, and uh, I was very lucky to be a part of it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, not the way we uh, drew it up to end, but um with the later start in the season i still took a little bit of time off and uh just kind of shortens up how much time home i have to train um but that doesn't really change the picture for how it's looked i mean spent a lot of time with family friends uh my girlfriend camille and uh was still working out and skating uh, every week so uh should should uh set up for a good recipe for success here coming up for training camp so the training schedule is always the same no matter what it's 10 weeks before training camp or whatever it is that you've done in the past. Exactly. I usually, uh, I usually take about three or four weeks off when I come home just to decompress and uh, let the body heal up, get away from the ice. And then I, no matter how much time before training camp, we just hit it and uh, run and start training. We work out four times a week, skate three times a week, and then uh, do a little extracurricular training. Like I work with the UFC guy uh, once a week as well. So what do you do with the UFC guy then? What uh, is it, it? People will say, ah, oh, you're working on fighting, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, it's more so it's it was an old, old UFC guys uh, by the name of Ray Newkirk. Um, he works with uh, technique on fighting, how to properly do it, protect yourself and then uh, ultimately fight back when uh, that case arises. Okay, so so it is a little bit more than more than that, but but it's there's balance involved. I mean, if fighting is one thing, fighting on two blades that are a fraction of an inch wide, that's a different animal. Absolutely. It's honestly, it's not even close to being the same as fighting on two feet. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess we're going to go a little bit farther. It's also good for conditioning what, and stuff of that nature, too. Core strength. There's a lot more to it than uh, throwing a punch. Just no yeah, right. exa exactly. And I guess that's where I was going is, is, the endurance. I remember in, in my situation, having a trainer and I hit a heavy bag and he'd say, hit it for two minutes and then pause for a minute, hit it like you're in a boxing match. And I was like, 25 seconds into it, I'm exhausted. I'm completely done. Oh yeah. It's you're, you're absolutely right. It, uh, it definitely takes a toll on your shoulders. It takes a toll on your uh, conditioning. And uh, I mean, I think that's why you see a lot of hockey fights that go on for no more than 20 or 30 seconds. Then right. guys look at each other, okay, we're done. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about that. So you uh, alluded to a little bit the way the season ended. Um, first off, it was your season is probably as uh, odd as you've had, I'm assuming, right? With with the trade, with, with everything that went on for you personally and professionally this past year. Oh, yeah. It was it was a special ride. Um wasn't exactly how I drew up the season being in Springfield. And then, you know, I got very lucky and got blessed with a beautiful opportunity in Milwaukee. Um, came in, really liked the guys, really liked the coaching staff and then all the support staff. And uh, it was great. It was a great environment. It was a really great team. And I had a good feeling about it. And then um, we finished out the regular season pretty well. And then going into playoffs, we just, we got all those guys from Nashville and we uh, kind of wrote our own story. We just kept, kept going one series at a time, one game at a time. And it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, hey. Obviously I like to be Coachella. Um, so there's a little uh, sour in my mouth there, but uh, it was, it was a really good experience. I think it was really good for the older guys. And I think it was really good for the younger guys too. You know, and, and that's just it. In my first season, 05, 06, the Admirals made it to the finals. Haven't been close since until this year. Um, there were rookies on that team who have never done it. There were older players on that team who never got that close again. So it, it's always special when you can make a run like this. It was, it was very special. Um, and I think it, it tests a lot of character. I mean, it was not easy by any means, as you guys saw, as all the players would attest, there were a lot of ups, a lot of downs, um, a lot of controversial calls or whatever it may have been. And, uh, everyone pushed through it. And, uh, it, Obviously, like I said, it, we would have liked to win, and 
uh, I think we gave it everything we had. There's really no regrets to be had. Yeah, and, and that's huge, right? Uh, and just exciting series. My goodness, the Manitoba series, the way that ends with Spencer Stasny and um, Isaac Radcliffe getting a couple of goals in Texas, and then you guys just blowing the doors off in the first period in game five, um, winning games three and four in Milwaukee against Coachella Valley. I mean, there's so many, just in the playoffs alone, so many highlights. Oh, it was it was phenomenal. It was a lot of fun. And I think that was cool. I mean, you don't see, for example, you don't see Spencer Stastny scoring a ton of goals. And for him to get that goal, and it's probably one of, if not the biggest goals uh, of the year, it's it, honestly, it makes me smile. It was, it was great. Every single, and that just kind of goes to show every single player, every single person each had their own little impact to, you know, make the, make the job whole. When you had come to Milwaukee in March, you had said just by chance, your parents were around you were able to pack up and get out of Springfield pretty easily. I, it's again, it gets back to the season you had and and not how you drew it up, but it, it wasn't how you drew it up, but it couldn't have worked out any better. It seems as it went along the way. Oh, it was just kind of one thing after another. You're not wrong. And uh, I got very lucky being close to home. Both my parents were free, were able to come help me pack up and kind of close that apartment, you know, close that book and then open up the new one uh, in Milwaukee. And, after that, flying out, you know, I was very blessed to have the opportunities I was given. Um, and I just tried to do my best to make the most of them and make the most of them, you know, be a good teammate, make a lot of new friends and uh, develop a culture that players and coaches and support staff and everybody wants to be in. Uh, you know, it's there's a lot of places you can go and it's hard to go to the rink. It's not fun. Uh, people don't look forward to it. And that's not how I wanted the culture of Milwaukee to be. And I walked into a uh, culture where it was fun. Everyone looked forward to going to the ring. People enjoyed being there. It was a good time. Kids wanted to get better. Uh, coaches wanted to help the players get better. And that's something that I hope to strive and continue to uh, induce and make for the players in the future starting next year. Well, yeah. And, and let's talk. Yes, it's great to be in Milwaukee, but there's no doubt you want to be in that Nashville lineup here. Absolutely. Uh, that's the first first thing on my mind. I'm going to go to training camp. I'm going to be in great shape and I'm going to push for a spot on that team and I'm going to do my best and you know, hopefully it all works out. You know, you had said to a, a few, in a few occasions with me and we've talked about this on tape and, and, and in video and whatever, but um, you had sort of a relationship with Scott Nickel and had been talking with him periodically over the years. So it, it made the transition it helped the transition as a player i think you you want to play and you want to feel like you're valued and i think when you have a relationship like you did with scott i think you had that right you had the feeling like you're valued and you're ready to go absolutely that was you're 100 right it was nice to feel valued it was nice to feel wanted and be given a true genuine opportunity um and that's something i'll forever be grateful for for uh scotty he uh when he was a player uh, back when he was playing pro, his agents uh, were the same agents that I currently have. So I knew him from the development camps that they would do in the summer when I was younger. Um, and that's kind of, that's where I met him. We'd work on face-offs uh, and we work on winning draws and the technique behind it. And that's kind of, that's where everything started. And then um, I knew him talking to him through free agency and in prior years. And then uh, this year worked out very well. Like I said, I was very blessed to have the opportunity that he was uh, granted me, and um, I did my best to make the most of it, and it seems to work out pretty well. You know, it, it's your story is pretty amazing, and I, I don't know how similar it is to other players in, in your spot, um, but Scott Nickel is roughly 15 years older than you. So to get into that situation where you're, what, 14, 15 years old? 16 year I don't even know what what age you get in on that about that age I I I'd say oh man how it was after I got to the bar list, so I must have been 18 maybe okay yeah so maybe maybe 18 it was right before I went to Cornell it was after I'd gotten drafted uh um, okay I want to yeah I want to say about 18 years old so that's that's not really the experience that a lot of people get to have at 18 years old. No, honestly, I, not at all. I mean, a lot of people kind of turn 18, like get drafted, and they kind of have to wing it, fly by the seat of their pants. Right, you know, right. 
you find right. the advisor or whatever it is, right? right? I was I was lucky. I the Bartlett's had reached out to me. They were they represented Alex Tuck. Um, or they currently still do represent Alex Tuck. So that's how I was kind of knew him. I grew up playing with Al and uh knew other names, knew who they were, they knew who I was. And then uh after we got uh acquainted after my first year of juniors, then um Knowing Scotty after that first development camp, which had been that summer, right after I got drafted, it was uh, some special. And I, I still, to this day, think about all the things he taught me on face-offs. So it, uh, it's funny how it always comes back full circle. You know, and that, there too, I think, when, when you came to the team, I think you were probably known more as a right wing, as a pro, I'm guessing. or And and um, at least we knew you as a, as a right wing or a, as a pro. Um and Scott vouched for you. Scott said, "Oh, he can take faceoffs." And you came in, and you won a lot of faceoffs. That was so. That was it. Was actually pretty funny of a conversation. He, when we after I got in trade, he called me. So how uh, he said something along the lines of, "So uh, how would you like to come here and play center?" I remember just kind of staring off, and I was thinking in my head, I was like, "Oh man, I haven't played center in a while," <laughs> and I played wing all all through pros. I Man, I took faceoffs here or there, but. I had not truly played center since I think juniors and it was a little bit of an adjustment, but I really liked it. Once I, I, I learned the technique about behind different things. I learned the positioning. I learned where I was supposed to be and when um, I really liked it and looking forward to building on that again, this upcoming year. How does your stature help in faceoffs? I, you, you're used to your body. Obviously you've been six, five for quite some time, but how does that help? If I, I got to imagine it helps to have, that leverage, but maybe, maybe us being, I don't know, you've only played, I guess, as a six, five player. So, but I'm just curious how it helps, how you use your body, how, how you can win draws, how uh, quickness, all of this stuff. Uh, quickness for sure. I think the power and strength is really where I draw from. Um, making sure I stay low. Uh, I struggle if guys get under, under my stick or they get below my center of gravity, but if I stay equal or lower than them i my strength and power should take over and that's where i find success in my draws looking ahead to this season now do you a training camp in nashville and that that gets it's amazing it's it's only a couple of weeks away which is just which is just wild this summer has flown um it, say you're in milwaukee do you do you know what the plan is are, are, you, are you a full-time center now i guess is the question uh, honestly i hope so i mean i'm very comfortable playing center i'm very comfortable playing wing um, I, I'm comfortable playing either. I really like center. That's the work I've been doing and uh, kind of visualizing and thinking about. That's where I finished up last year, and I would love to start that and continue my role as center. Um, that being said, I can also play wing. Um, it's honestly wherever the lineup needs me. You you signed pretty quickly, and you committed for a little bit, and Nashville committed to you for a couple of seasons. A pretty easy decision. Yes. Yes. That's where I wanted to be. I, um, you know, I'll go back to the feeling of feeling valued, feeling wanted, getting a genuine opportunity. And, uh, I made that very clear at the end of the season saying that I wanted to be there. Um, and I'm glad that we could work out a deal and it happened relatively pretty quickly. Um, and I honestly was very happy, you know, it's okay. Now it's time to build on what we just did and, you know, run it, run it back and move forward for the next two years. You're going to have a lot of players. And I think it's going to be, you got a lot of players coming back, but it's the American league. You know, this a 35, 40% of the roster is completely different, but because of that long playoff run, I think you guys got to know a lot of those players and the coaches got to know a lot of those players. Um, some big names are gone, but some big names have been added. This is it, it's, it's the American league. It's always interesting. Always. And that's, something you learn from a young age is that it's not, not, it's not nearly the same team coming back the next year. You know, that's not a bad thing. Other people get opportunities. You get people get to step up and play bigger roles. And, um, you know, the leaders are going to continue to lead and if we can create the culture that we had last year. I think we're going to have a nice, nice season and a long playoff run. Anthony, it's good to see you. We'll let you go. Enjoy the rest of your summer. There's not a heck of a lot. Do you do you pile in one last rah rah trip kind of thing, or or is this is, now? Are you in full workout mode? No, this will be full workout mode. Um, I got a couple of days off the start of this week after visiting some uh, family, and 
uh, after I get home this evening, we'll jump right back in the swing of workouts and training and really, uh, really commit to full playoff or I guess full training mode. Uh, right. here for the rest. Very good. It's great to see you, man. Good luck. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks in Nashville. Hey, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate it. We'll see you in Nashville. All right. That's Anthony Angelo.